just going to go through the multimeter, the correlation meter, and the loudness meter. So I've got two tracks here side by side. I've got a professional reference track, and I've got an old track that I did, um, not mastered, just mixed. As you can see, there's uh, quite a bit of variation in the waveforms between the two. My unmastered track is very sketchy, not filling out all of the frequency spectrum, whereas the pro track, as you can see by the waveform, is filling out all the or most of the frequency spectrum. So that's been professionally mastered, obviously. Um, all, all I want to do today is just show you how I go about using these these tools because um, it's good to do like A B split testing between the Pro Track and the reference track. So, so before we get started, what I'm going to do is just go through quickly what the actual multimeter tool looks like, what it does. Hertz range there from 16 to 16,000, and you can you've got the genonometer there as well where you can check the stereo capabilities of your track and just trying to keep this really simple because there's a lot of videos out there where it gets a bit technical you've got the detection of the mono the left and right maximum peak the right and the left uh, analyzer bands 63 or you can change that to 31 keep it on 63 because that's the most accurate so if I play this track focus on this mix that I've done and then you change the peak, you press hold and you can change the peak to say 6 seconds and then when the display bar drops you can see what frequencies are peaking and where so if I play this one again I'll put it, what I do, I'll correct that, I'll put it onto infinite and then we'll play that track, stop it, and then we can see where all the peak points are hitting there on the frequency spectrum. So I've got minus 15 down to sort of minus 50 at the low end. Yeah, so basically, as you can see, this is not a very well mixed track picked for demonstration purposes as it's very one sided on this side, and then there's not much mid range going on. It's a very varied one, so it gives you an indication there of what you need to fix in your mix, basically. So now if we look at the Pro Track, look on the multimeter, let's go a bit further into the track. See, as you can tell with this track, see, look, that's a more even peak range, hitting between sort of minus 15 minus 35, a lot of mid-range or equal-ish to the high end and the low so it's covering this frequency spectrum very well and then with the actual multimeter you can also click on genominator genominator, no, hold on a minute genometer, let's, yeah, let's call it that right, so this one is a uh, Let's take a selection of the track there. This is where you can check the stereo capabilities of your track. As you can see, there's a good stereo range on this one. It doesn't want to be too far up to the right or left. It just wants to be sat there in the middle with the coming out to about here, basically. And let's see what my track looks like. The genome, genome meter. <laughs> I can't even say it. Genome. It's not too bad actually, it's um, yeah, about where it should be in comparison to the reference track. So as you can see there, you can use the multimeter to indicate the issues that you need to fix in the mix. And also with the analyzer, you can uh, you can pre-adjust this and take the frequencies up or down depending on what you want to check. So when you're using that obviously you're playing it through, you're playing your track through, you don't want to see any red here. Okay so 
just to demonstrate here, I've got this game plugin. I've amped it up to like plus eight dB there. Take the multimeter, put it in front of the game plugin. And if I play that through, so this is this is what we don't want to see in a mix where the peak levels are hitting the red there. You can see that bouncing into the red. Yeah, we don't want that. You want all your mix, your first mixes to be around sort of minus 12 to leave enough headroom for mastering. So the other two plugins I wanted to demonstrate on this short tutorial is just the correlation meter and the loudness meter. So if I go onto the reference track there, go onto the correlation meter, if I play that, now that's hitting on plus one where is where it needs to hit. And what does the correlation meter do? Well, it's actually a meter that displays the range of your stereo field. So if it's on plus one, that's absolutely fine. If it's on zero, that's absolutely fine. It, that just shows that if it's on zero, you, you've got a really good stereo spread. Plus one is what you look at here for the so pro track. Standing on plus one. So that's how you can check the um, stereo dynamic range of your track. Now, if it's anywhere minus one in this in this area, then you've got some what's known as phase issues, which are stereo issues. Um, so you may need to go back check your track. Um, this, so it's just worth going back through your mix and just checking the dynamic range and stereo range of certain tracks. Right guys, just a quick one. When you're referencing a track, which is a pro track, put a game plugin on the reference track and just take it down minus uh, 4.2 dB. Reason being, you're comparing a fully mastered pro track to your mix. So obviously that level of volume on the pro master track is going to be a lot greater so just to compensate when you compare your track just take this down say minus 4 db ish and put the game plug on put the game plug in on and take it down